Ah, it's finally time for the mock battle. I'm eager to put my skills to use. And you, Professor? Excellent. I have high expectations for your command. That said, I've no doubt it will take everything we've got to pull a victory. Our opponents are mighty, that much is certain. But I'm positive we can win. Hey there, did we miss our invite to this strategy meeting? Oh, no worries, we'll just join in now. Nice try, Claude. But I do not intend to let slip our strategies. Especially when we are up against such strong opponents as you two. Well now, kind words from his kingliness. If that's the case, we'd better come up with some clever schemes so as not to disappoint. Right, Princess? Right. No matter the tactics you devise, we will destroy you. The best you can hope for is to learn a thing or two. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a friendly rivalry, but let's not get carried away. A rash attitude could be your undoing, after all. Hmm. Perhaps your time would be better spent preparing instead of worrying about the competition's mindset. Hey now, if you two were getting this fired up before the battle even starts, it'll make it that much easier for my class to sweep up a win. So please, carry on. <sighs> a good point, Claude. I apologize, that wasn't my intention. At any rate, let's vow to make this a productive battle, shall we? Oh? In that case, I won't hold back. Professor, I've been looking for you. I was hoping we could all share a meal together. It could serve as both a victory celebration and a post-battle analysis. What do you think? Of course. After all, we fought hard out there. Such exertion is bound to make anyone hungry for respite. Don't you agree? Come now, Professor. We can't very well celebrate without the key to our victory present. He's right. He really is. We were only able to win because we had your help, Professor. Yes. Compared with that boar who knows nothing save frontal attacks, your tactics were nearly decent. Felix, you really ought to stop picking fights with His Highness. Don't worry, Ingrid. I encourage all to speak freely. And I must agree that the Professor's tactics were truly extraordinary. I have much to learn. Oh, sure. But today was exhausting. I'm so hungry I can barely stand. To be honest, so am I. Let's head to the dining hall. Together. Professor, I'm sorry to intrude, but... You don't look too happy for someone who just won. You say that, but your eyes tell a different story. I know we only just met, so this may be difficult for you, but... I'd love nothing more than to share our happiness with you. Joy can be so fleeting, after all. We're all in this together, so I hope you will consent. I'm sure the rest of the class feels the very same. Well, come along, Professor. Let's enjoy the fruits of our labor. We're finally back. I'll leave the report to Lady Rhea in your hands, Professor. Huh. Edelgard. Does the Black Eagle House have a mission to see to? Remember, on a real battlefield, one can never tell what's to come. You can never dismiss the possibility of the worst-case scenario. Take care, Edelgard. There's no need to state the obvious, Dimitri. But tell me, why the concern? Perhaps you doubt my abilities? If so, your lack of insight is disappointing. That's not what I meant. If I've offended you, I hope you'll accept my apology. Don't worry about it. Professor, we must hurry. Everyone's waiting on you. I suppose I should be off too. Try not to let her get to you, Dimitri. I promise you, there's no need for concern. Hmm. <laughs> now that's a lark. I had no idea you had a sense of humor, Professor. I'll tell you all about it. Some other time. That... That was my first time killing civilians, too. Those who I'm sworn to protect.
Are you insane? Those weren't knights or soldiers, but fathers and sons. We... We shouldn't have killed them. We should have found another way. I... I'm sorry. It's not fair for me to blame you for the circumstance. I know that if we hadn't done what we did, even more civilian lives would have been lost. At least my mind understands that, but... My heart... <sighs> Professor... Those in power, no matter the era, always claim they fight for a just cause. That they take life to protect it. But... Is it truly okay to take any life you please? All in service of some implacable just cause? Lord Lenato didn't take up arms out of a lust for power. He simply believed his cause to be just. Who's to say it wasn't? Maybe we didn't have to cut him down like that. Maybe we could have reached a mutual understanding. Found a path of peace. I... I have to believe that. Perhaps the notion sounds laughable to you. Mere lip service to naive ideals. But I can't believe otherwise. Is your meeting over, Professor? I was just thinking about something. Professor, the possession of relics and crests has been highly valued in Fargus since ancient times. It's far from uncommon for someone to lose their ability to lead their house because they don't bear a crest. Just like Miklon. It happened to my uncle as well. The eldest child of the king, and yet he never ascended to the throne. All families whose bloodlines carry the crests of the ten elites are much the same. But House Gautier takes it a step further, and absolutely requires an heir who possesses a crest. To that house, the power of crests is a necessity, not a luxury. House Gautier holds the most northern territory in the kingdom, and they have fought with the people to the north for many years. The head of that house is responsible for protecting that territory from fearsome invaders, whom they keep at bay with the power of crests and relics. In exchange for that responsibility, they are granted special privileges within the kingdom. I believe the same. Ability cannot be measured by the possession of a crest alone. I believe that Margrave Gautier was wrong to disinherit Miklon, simply because he did not bear a crest. Still, there is always a reason for why such customs stand the test of time. Imagine what this world would be like if no one placed any stock in crests. Bloodlines that carry crests would dwindle. The metaphorical blade used to oppose threats would eventually rust. <sighs> this same argument has been made time and time again across the years. Both sides are at once right and wrong. I believe those with crests and those without should acknowledge the other's strengths and learn to respect each other based on personal merits. And that doesn't apply only to crests. The same holds true for lineage, race, faith, ideologies. If we could just accept each other and make mutual concessions one step at a time, perhaps... <sighs> Who knows if that's even possible. Everyone has something that is unacceptable within them. I certainly do. And I'd wager you do as well. I wonder which is best, Professor. To cut away that which is unacceptable? Or to find a way to accept it anyway? I had a wonderful time today, Professor. As usual, I was astonished by how much you ate in the name of celebration. Really, though, I must thank you again. Our victory in the Battle of the Eagle and Lion was thanks in no small part to you. Yes, that is true, but it was your instruction that allowed us to reach our full potential. I feel silly admitting this now, but when you first came to lead our class, you unnerved me. You never smiled and you never showed anger either. And yet, you didn't appear to be suppressing your emotions. They just weren't there. At first, I thought perhaps you just didn't care for us. But I soon concluded that wasn't the case at all. For the longest time, I just couldn't tell what you were thinking. It was though you had no humanity whatsoever. 
You're different now. In the half year we've spent together, I've seen the glow of humanity in your eyes and in your actions countless times. I am truly grateful to have had the chance to spend this time with you, Professor. I see. So you'll be staying here for some time then. Honestly, I'm surprised. I've heard it's been a few years since you last donated to the church. That was merely because of the financial situation of my territory. I assure you it has nothing to do with my dedication to the church. By the way, Dimitri, isn't Edelgard currently enrolled at the Officer's Academy as well? Yes, she's in the Black Eagle House. I don't believe she has any plans to leave anytime soon. Why not pay her a visit? I may do just that. It's nice to stay in touch with my dear niece every now and then. Of course, I'm also delighted that I was able to speak with my nephew as well. Whether through marriage or otherwise, family is family after all. Of course. The feeling is mutual. Professor, if you were watching, you should have made your presence known. That was Lord Arendelle, the regent for the Empire. He is also Edelgard's uncle. My stepmother was his younger sister. We are not related by blood, but he is technically my uncle. Yes, my stepmother was Edelgard's birth mother. Edelgard and I are siblings by marriage. We can delve into that topic another time. For now, let's make preparations to investigate what's happening in that village. Oh dear, the princess of the Empire and the kingdom's prince are kin. How very odd. All beings are attached somehow to those who are their family. Yes, even I. I must have had a family too. I wish I could remember them. <sighs> Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Don't waste your time on me. Saving the villagers is far more important. We haven't a moment to lose. What can we do amid such confusion? We'll have to take up arms against the villagers who are rampaging. If we strike carefully, it should be possible to spare their lives. Oh dear. Isn't there a more peaceful way to deal with this? No matter how long it takes, we'll need to check and rescue them all, one at a time. Those who have gone mad may be victims themselves. Is it possible to save them? Well, saving the poor people who aren't crazy is definitely our top priority. Let's get on with it. Slow down, Annette. It won't do anyone any good if we panic and get injured ourselves. Isn't that... Your Highness, suspicious figures spotted in the village. They seem to be... watching the chaos. Are they the ones responsible for this madness? If so, it's clear what must be done. Kill them all. Don't let a single one of them escape. Sever their limbs and crush their wicked skulls! Professor, I... I'm sorry you saw that side of me in the village. It must have been quite a shock to you and the others. I'm mortified by my behavior. When I saw the chaos and violence there, my mind just went completely dark. I see. So that happens to you as well, then. I've told you before that someday we may find ourselves facing something we simply cannot accept. That's what the chaos in Ramire Village was to me. Solon and the Flame Emperor are both beasts who must be eliminated. Demons who kill the innocent. They aren't even human at this point. It must be hard to fathom. It's true that I don't have any strong connection to those villagers. And yet... You see, Professor, 
I saw the same flames of torment just four years ago. In Dusker. Please, have mercy! The pain! Make the burning stop! Help me! Somebody! Avenge us! Those who killed us! Tear them apart! Destroy them all! <laughs> my father, my stepmother, four years ago, they lost their lives to those flames. I'll never forget. I still remember their faces, their screams, the tortured last moments of every person who died that day. But right now, all that matters is that we do whatever we can to help the surviving villagers get back to their normal lives. Thank you. For everything. There's a reason that I came to the Officer's Academy. Just one reason. I came here for revenge. And one day, I will have it. Perfect timing, Professor. If you don't mind, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. It's in regard to sword training. Not for myself, but... Well... To be honest, I've been teaching swordsmanship to the orphans at the monastery for a while now. Some of them saw me sparring with the knights one day. They started pestering me to teach them. They were so earnest... I couldn't help but oblige. There's much I wish to show them, but due to my own studies and training, I'm afraid my time is rather limited. Which brings me to my favor. Your swordsmanship is unmatched. I hate to ask this of you, but... Would you consider lending me a hand? Thank you, truly. I am in your debt, and I always repay my debts, I'll have you know. All of these children lost their families and homes to war or illness. This may sound a bit arrogant, but I feel it's my responsibility to help them. I lost my parents without warning, too. In that way, we're the same. In Dusker, I lost my father, stepmother, and closest friends. I didn't have many allies at the castle after that. In truth, I had only to do for companionship. I'm afraid not. My birth mother fell ill and died shortly after I was born. And my uncle... Suffice to say, we don't get along. Ah, but there were those outside the castle walls I was close to, such as Rodrigue. <laughs> Pardon my rudeness. I meant Lord Rodrigue. He is my father's old companion and the father of Felix. On the occasions he would visit the capital, He'd take me out hunting, or on long horse rides. While Dudu is like a brother to me, Rodrigue is more like a second father. It might sound ridiculous, but... He's the kind of man I hope to become one day. Someone who helps others. Someone who can reach out and save a lost soul. Oh, please, accept my apologies for boring you with my life story. In any case, don't forget your promise, Professor. I'm counting on you. What are you doing at this hour? Oh, I know. You are eavesdropping. I must admit that I approve. Professor, we must remain quiet. I see. The Flame Emperor and Monica. And the mage who rescued Monica. I don't know. But if we keep listening, we might be able to find out. An unexpected chance to hear their plans. Patience, patience. Oh, thank you. You saved me. If you were to die, then the mystery of our bodies would be revealed. Preventing that was my only aim. 
I'm afraid you must remain, Kranya. There is something I need you to do. Oh, of course. I am always happy to cooperate with Solon. Leave it to me. How annoying. Flame Emperor, is she offending you? Unfortunately, we cannot take our eyes off her, so there is nothing to be done. You are our greatest creation. We use the defiled beast's blood as the fuel to your flame, that you may burn even the gods. Now is the time to cleanse Fodlin with that power and bring forth our salvation. There will be no salvation for you and your kind. Those responsible for such gruesome deeds in Dusker and Enmar. All so that you may acquire the strength you need. All for a purpose. I've got you. Finally. If we don't act now, we'll miss our chance. <laughs> Even if someone has overheard us, there is nothing they can do. There have always been rats in the walls, and there always will be. No. The dagger. No, never mind. It couldn't possibly be so. Professor, those are the ones we must destroy. They're the bastards who killed my family and Gerald. For now, let's return to the monastery and regroup. As for the Flame Emperor's dagger, I'll hold on to it for the time being. Thank you for your help the other day, Professor. Please. Allow me to express my gratitude by taking you to dinner. Fantastic. But please think about what you'd like to eat. After all, such magnificent guidance must work up quite an appetite. I've studied swordsmanship for some time, but your mercenary skills are something else entirely. Speaking of which, there's another question I must ask you. Were you reconciled with the reality of battle from your first foray? With... The killing part, I mean? I see. No. I do not carry that burden well. I doubt that will change, no matter how many years come and go. The first time I led on the battlefield, I was sent to quell a rebellion in the West. It was not a difficult fight. The enemy was not well trained, and their morale was low. A swing of the lance, and your opponent falls. A flash of your blade, and a path opens up. That's the sort of battle it was. Easy, right? That's one way to look at it. The leader of the rebel army was defeated, and the rebellion quelled. This was at the height of the post-war period. I recall coming across a dead soldier's body. He was clutching a locket, and inside was a lock of golden hair. I don't know to whom it belonged. His wife? His daughter? Mother? Lover? I'll never know. He was a soldier. An enemy. Someone we had cut down without hesitation. But in that moment, I realized he was also a real person. Just like the rest of us. Of course, we cannot stand idly by and allow anyone to commit senseless acts of violence. Yet, in dispensing what we call justice, we take the lives of cherished family members, beloved friends. Killing is part of the job, but even so, there are times when I'm chilled to the bone by the depravity of my own actions. Is it? Perhaps you're right. I pray that you are. Professor, may I speak freely? When we first met, 
I thought of you as someone who felt no strong feelings about killing your enemies. I could never trust someone who kills without batting an eye. My heart won't allow it. But after speaking with you and getting to know you better, I can see you're not like that. Now I know, with all my heart, that I can trust you. Thank you for that. Professor, I'm glad you're okay. And you seem relatively unscathed. I'm... I'm so relieved. What's more, Gerald's foe is dead. Though we took little satisfaction from it. Professor, I must ask. What happened after we were separated? You look... different. The goddess appeared and gave you her power? It's as though the legend of old has been made flesh. It's hard to grasp, in all honesty. But having seen you pierce the sky with my own eyes, I find myself unable to doubt it. Yes, the legend of Saint Seros. It is said that she received a divine revelation from the goddess and was gifted with her power. Long ago, the goddess dispatched Seros to defeat an evil king who went mad with power. Perhaps the goddess saw the goodness of Seros within you too, and wished to help you in your quest to defeat evil. <laughs> if you're Seros, granted power by the goddess, then I suppose that makes me... Ah, never mind. I'm getting carried away. Professor, what's wrong? Are you... Uh, are you asleep? What is happening these days? Well, it matters not. We must get you help, and fast. Sorry, Professor, but I have no choice but to carry you back. for you. I will take that head from your shoulders and hang it from the gates of Enbar! break your neck. There is one thing I must ask you. Stay out of my way. I don't recall giving you permission to speak. Answer my question. That is all you have left to do. Flame Emperor. No. Edelgard. Tell me now. Why did you cause such a tragedy? <sighs> You killed your own mother, and yet you haven't even had the decency to stop and consider the reasons behind your actions! Have you? I already told you I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> it was foolish to think I could reason with a lowly beast. Your Majesty, no! You are a monster. Come, human. We weren't able to defeat her. Your Highness. I will kill Edelgard with my own hands. I swear it! Let's return to the monastery, Professor. It is clear what must be done.
I should have known. That one day, you would be haunting me as well. You. What must I do to be rid of you? I will kill that woman, I swear it! Do not look upon me with scorn in your eyes! No. You... It can't be! You're alive? <laughs> if that is the case, that can only mean you are another Imperial spy. Did you come here to kill me? Answer the question. I have been dead, more or less. What do you hope to gain asking me that? There are more important matters at hand. Do you not smell them? Filthy rats everywhere! And traces of those who were here long ago. And thieves crawling from the woodwork, attracted by the promise of treasure. <laughs> Since the monastery fell, Order in this area fell right along with it. You must have seen the state of the town near Garrick Mach on your way here. Vile thieves run rampant. They pillage and loot to their heart's content. I must kill them. Every last one. It's time to hunt down their nest. I told you, I will kill them all. It doesn't matter what their reasons are. Someone must put a stop to the cycle of the strong trampling the weak. Or do you condone their actions? Do you believe that the pillaging and slaughtering those rats live for is justified? It is reprehensible and they must be put down. I intend to give them a taste of the pain they have inflicted on others. Even if it means becoming a rat myself. I swore to at least do that much. I will not let them down. It doesn't matter. All that matters is killing those who deserve to die. You're wrong! It's not like that, Glenn. I swear it! Any love I once had for my stepsister has been tossed aside. Only hatred remains. If I could tear that woman to shreds right this very moment, I would! I don't care if she's the Emperor. It's no different than killing anyone else. So I beg you, all of you, do not worry about my resolve. Please, Father, and you too, Stepmother, do not gaze at me with that look in your eyes. I will bring you her head soon, and when I do, you may finally rest in peace. I know it. Yes, I know it. What do you want? I see. We should make haste and prepare to move out at once. I must kill her as soon as possible. I have no time to leisurely set up camp. If I must, I will go by myself. I have family waiting for me. Please, I can't die here. A beast of your depravity prattling on about family? How amusing. As though you could understand such a thing as love? You heartless monster! You are a monster too, General. You have just yet to realize it. A monster who thinks he's a man. Despicable. As a general, you must have killed countless souls without a shred of mercy. Do you still remember the sound of them begging, just as you're begging now? 
Or now that your life is at its end, will you hold to the lie that your hands are not stained red with blood? This... this is war. I did what I had to for the Empire, for the people, for my family. <laughs> so, you are piling up corpses for the people and your family. And I am doing the same for the salvation of the dead. After all is said and done, we are both murderers, both stained, both monsters. You're wrong. Am I? I can smell the rotting flesh upon your hands even now, General. Enough! That's enough! I won't kill you right away, my fellow monster. Unless you object to watching your friends die. One by one. If so, I will do you the service of removing your eyes first, so that... Please, forgive me. What is the meaning of this? The Dimitri you once knew is dead. All that remains is the repulsive, blood-stained monster you see before you. If you do not approve of what I have become, then kill me. If you insist that you cannot, then I will continue to use you and your friends until the flesh falls from your bones. Idiots. Embracing death for the sake of that woman. Truly foolish. I... I don't know. They were just beasts with human faces. I had no choice but to kill them, and so I did. That... that is all there is to it. It's about time you two returned. We must discuss our next course of action. <laughs> oh, have I caught you off guard, your highness? Aww, does it hurt? I bet it hurts real bad, doesn't it? But it's nothing compared to what my brother felt. You will never be forgiven, you know. I will never forgive you! You... you must be... You filthy monster! It's time to die! Dimitri! Ah! Huh. Professor! Do it now! Your Highness, are you safe? Please tell me, it wasn't in vain. This punishment, it was mine to bear. There are no sins or punishments on the battlefield. No, don't die. Please don't die. Father, stepmother, Glenn, they all died and left me behind. Roderick. Are you to join the ghosts who shadow my every move? This is my fault. I... I'm the one who killed you, as surely as though I had wielded the blade. <laughs> Your Highness, you have one thing terribly wrong. None of them, none of us, died for you. I'm dying for what I believe in, just as they did. Your life is your own. It belongs to no other, living or dead. Live for what you believe in. Dimitri, my boy, you really do look just like His Majesty. What do you want? It doesn't concern you. Get out of my way. No. Uh. 
Silence! You have no idea what you're talking about. Death is the end. No matter how much lingering regret a person has, after death, they are powerless. They cannot even wish for revenge, much less seek it out. Hatred, regret... Those burdens fall on the shoulders of those who are left behind. And so I must continue down this path. I already told you as much. It is far too late to stop. Do not waste your breath with some nonsense about how I should move on with my life for their sake. That is merely the logic of the living. It's meaningless. Those who died with lingering regret, they will not loose their hold on me so easily. But you seem to have all the answers. So tell me, Professor. Please, tell me. How do I silence their desperate pleas? How do I... How do I save them? Ever since that day nine years ago, I have lived only to avenge the fallen. Even my time at the Officer's Academy was also that I could secure my revenge and clear away the regret of the dead. It was the only thing that kept me alive. My only reason to keep moving forward. <laughs> but then who or what should I live for? What I believe in. Rodrigue said the same thing, but is it possible? I am a murderous monster. My hands are stained red. Could one such as I truly hope for such a life? As the sole survivor of that day, do I... Do I have the right to live for myself? Your hands are so warm. Have they always been? Sleep evades me, so I thought I'd get in some extra training. I was just about to finish. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather, but I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Gronder. Her eyes were filled with revenge, just as mine once were. I don't know, but I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. I have taken so many lives. And with each one, I face hatred. During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast and that young girl's brother. At some point, I must have... <sighs> that is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated. Because I stole and... Because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions, only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. Yes. As one who chose to fight, it is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war. Until the day my life comes to an end. Ha! <laughs> 
thank you. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Ferdiad, it has been a lifetime since I was here last. Five years ago, in fact. On the day before my execution, when Dadu helped me escape from prison. I killed soldiers from my homeland, stole weapons from their corpses, and made my escape soaked in their blood. To think this is how I would return to the city of my birth, after all that has happened. I do not deserve that. If not for you or Rodrigue, I would still be lost. I am glad to have you at my side. From the bottom of my heart, I am forever grateful. Let's win this, Professor. Let's all make it out alive and celebrate our victory. Try as that woman might to spout nonsense to her very last, nothing could change the fact that she was an enemy of the kingdom. She sold out Fargus to the Empire, forcing our people to suffer their tyranny. But all that ends today. No more blood will be needlessly spilled. Now that Cornelia has fallen, we will exert pressure on the nobles who were aligned with her. Perhaps we may yet find a connection to the tragic incident in Dusker. Once we do that, we will finally be able to prove the innocence of its people. Your Highness. I am certain that would make those of Dusker who lost their lives that day very happy. I am grateful, and I am proud to serve a man such as you. Come, Your Highness. You still have some responsibilities that must be carried out. Your people have been patiently awaiting your return. Do you mean... No. I can't bear to face them after all that I... <coughs> Professor. Right you are, as ever. I am their king, after all. What... What is this? As you can see, the people are rejoicing at the return of their king. Even though I turned my back on them and fled the kingdom in disgrace. Even so, the spectacle before you does not lie. We are a kingdom in need of a king. A hero to save the people from their long oppression. Your Highness, it is truly a blessing that you have returned. Do I really have the right to stand here? Will they accept me as their king? Bloodstained as I am, am I fit to be king? Yes, you are right again, my friend. I am finally home again. Fargus, how oh, I missed you. It may be spring, but the nights are quite chilly here in Ferdiad. Still, our celebratory feast shows no sign of stopping. Have you grown weary of the festivities? It's not that I have grown weary. More that I find it difficult to be around everyone at the moment. I have just returned from visiting the graves of my loved ones. It had been a long while since I left flowers. I was always terribly afraid of going near there. But I could not stay away forever. You have taught me something important, Professor. <laughs> you never let up, do you? No, what I'm referring to is far more valuable. How should I put this? Perhaps it is most accurate to say that you taught me how to live. If you and I had not reunited on that fateful day, I'm certain I would have died a fruitless death on the battlefield. I would have foolishly challenged a horde of foes. And in doing so, needlessly sacrificed the lives of my friends and myself. But now I have returned to my rightful place. I struggle with what to say when I know well that words are not enough to express my gratitude. You saved me from the darkness and guided me back to the light. Thank you, Professor. With all that I am, I thank you. Revenge was never something I wished for. 
It was an obligation I felt I had inherited from those who died. I believed my life belonged to those who lost their own in Dusker. But what I now seek is something else entirely. I can say that with confidence. But I digress. For tonight, our only focus should be to bask in our victory. After that, we must prepare for our battle with the Empire. To start, we must absorb the Kingdom Knights taken by the Dukedom into our own forces and reshuffle our troops. The Lords will need to help purge our territory of Imperial forces, and I will use my authority as King to gather forces from various regions. And we'll have to ask the merchants to lend us the funds we require. Oh, and we must request delivery of supplies at once. I cannot handle all this work by myself, you know. I will be counting on you, Professor. There is much to do, but it is all critical work if we hope to stand a chance against the Empire. Yes, I am well aware. I believe we have spoken of this before. Everyone has something they simply cannot accept. As for Edelgard, I am certain she will never be able to accept the Church of Seros. I believe that is why she seeks to destroy it. She is looking to revolutionize the world, in her mind, for the better. But even if she manages to birth a new world, it would be at the cost of... <sighs> I wish to end this war through acceptance, not annihilation. Just as my people accepted me, I wish dearly to accept her. But I fear... Professor, do you think Edelgard will show up? Well, well. It's been a long time, Professor. And hello to you too, Dimitri. Edelgard. I did not think you would actually accept my request. Call it a win. Well then, what did you want to talk about? I will get straight to the point. Why did you start this war? There had to be a way to change things in your territory without the need for so many senseless casualties. It may be hard to believe, but this is the way that leads to the fewest casualties in the end. Don't you see? How could I? Countless people have already lost their lives in this conflict. The longer we took to revolt, the more victims this crooked world would have claimed. I weighed the victims of war against the victims of the world as it is now, and I chose the former. I believe that I have chosen the best path, the only path. Even after seeing the faces of those who have suffered the ravages of war, you would still force them to throw their lives away for the future? You are obsessively devoted to this war and deaf to the screams of its victims. You cannot change the cycle of the strong dominating the weak with a method like that. You're wrong. That very cycle is exactly what I have devoted my life and my power to destroy. If after all of this, you believe the weak will still be weak, that is only because they are too used to relying on others instead of on themselves. Yes, perhaps someone as strong as you are can claim something like that. But you cannot force that belief onto others. People aren't as strong as you think they are. There are those who cannot live without their faith, and those who cannot go on once they have lost their reason for living. Your path will not be able to save them. It is the path of the strong, and so it could only benefit the strong. <laughs> so you consider me strong, do you? Even if one clings to their faith, the goddess will never answer them. Countless souls will be lost that way, living without purpose. And I can be counted among those who have died that way as well. But that's why I must change this world, on behalf of the silent and weak. And do you intend to become a goddess yourself? Will you steal the power to take action from the broken-hearted masses you claim to defend? The ones who can truly change the way of the world are not the rulers, but the people. Pushing your own sense of justice and your own ideals onto even one other person is nothing more than self-righteousness. Maybe it is self-righteousness, but it doesn't matter. Someone has to take action and put a stop to this world's endless, blood-stained history. Do you not believe in the power of the people to join together and rise up? Humans are weak creatures, but they are also creatures who help each other, support each other, and together find the right path. I have learned that humans are capable of all that from the Professor and from everyone in my life. 
I doubt a highborn person like yourself could know how the poor feel or what motivates them. This is nonsense, though I'm finally starting to understand how you feel. But that makes it even clearer to me that we can never fully understand each other. I feel the same. I finally understand. What you believe is right. Goodbye, Dimitri. Wait, Edelgard. There is something I must give you. This is for you. Use it to cut a path to the future you wish for. And I will rise up to meet you there. El? <sighs> El! So it's true. You're really going away? Going back home? There's nothing I can do about it. It's all happening so fast. I'm as surprised as you are. El. Um, here. I want you to have this. El, listen to me. No matter how hard things get, you can't give in, okay? You've got to cut a path to the future you wish for, no matter what. It's... a dagger? Why would you give me something like this? Oh, um... I'm sorry. I couldn't think of anything better to give you. Edelgard, what are you doing? It's time to go. Hurry and get in the carriage. Oh, I... I'm sorry, Uncle. I have to go now. Goodbye, Dimitri. I... I remember now. You gave me a dagger all those years ago. <laughs> I'm still sorry about that. I should have given you something that would have made you happier. Perhaps. At the time, I was quite flustered by such a dangerous gift. I left without giving you a proper response. And that was the last time we saw each other. True. It is a sweet memory. With a bitter ending. I'm afraid it will do no good to reminisce, Dimitri. That girl you knew back then is gone. As good as dead. But... I'll tell you now what I wasn't able to tell you back then. Thank you, my dear forgotten friend. Because of you, I never lost my heart. As for the future, that will be decided in battle. King of Fargus, as the Emperor, I shall await your arrival in Inbar. Come now, my friend. You must stop staying up so late. Tomorrow is yet another early morning. Then again, I know that matters little. You cannot sleep, can you? <laughs> Neither can I, of course. I... I want you to know I am sorry for making you do so much when your battle wounds aren't even completely healed yet. 
Do not worry about me. My shoulder has healed nicely. I still have some numbness in my hand, but it should not hinder me too much. It is a lovely night, is it not? How many years has it been since I was kept awake by hopes for the future, rather than by nightmares of the past? I have had the same nightmare for nine long years. A nightmare in which I am constantly tormented by those who have died. They ask me why I have not avenged them. Why I got to live, yet they had to die. No matter how many corpses I piled up for them, in the end, their voices only grew louder. Voices loathing me, calling out to me. Their inescapable death cries ringing in my ears, clinging to my soul. Even now, I can always hear them. I am certain I will be hearing them until the day I die. But I will not cover my ears. I will go on living, and their voices will serve as a warning. As a king, and as a wretch who claimed countless lives. I will build a kingdom where the people can live in peace. I am sure she would laugh and call such talk foolish. But I wish to change this world in my own way. Well, your grace, things will be busy from now on. Our first order of business is tomorrow's coronation. Once a professor and student, now an archbishop and a king. How very far we have come. That is true. <laughs> to me, you will always be the one who guided me so kindly. My ally through all. My beloved... Yes. My beloved. Listen, there is something I wish to give you before the coronation. Give me your hand. Please, I beg of you, say something. If you do not wish to accept it, please, just tell me. If so, I will face the truth and walk away. What is this? Yes, I see. Right. In that case, let us exchange them, shall we? Your hands. Now that I hold them within my own, I see how small and fragile they are. These hands that have saved me countless times. Thank you, my beloved. Your kind, warm hands. May they cling to my own forevermore. <laughs>